Hey, so this is a video to explain how to use Lagrange's remainder formula. So you'll be given a question, for example, like this one. So your f of x is a function that you're given. So it's, in this case, it's 8, 8 plus 2x all to the power of a third. Uh, your first degree Taylor polynomial is 2 plus 1 over 6x. And this one is centered around x equals 0. Um, so if you're not given the Taylor polynomial, you could have easily just computed t1 of x. Right? And if it's not centered around 0, they would tell you it's centered around something else. And you could just simply uh, calculate it yourself going through uh, the Taylor polynomial uh, formulas. So in this one, we're going to find what r1 of x is. And the r1 of x is based off of this t1 of x. And again, we're going to give the upper bound of the error. So that's r1 of x, the error, for the third root of 9 using t1 at a half. And we'll talk about number two in a minute. Um, let's just do number one first. So number one is find r1 of x. r1 of x, well, let's just remind ourselves, rk, r, oh, stupid pen, rk of x, well, this is equal to f to the k plus one derivative evaluated at c over k plus 1 factorial times x minus a to the k plus 1. Right, so remember c is some number between x and a. So it's either x less than c less than a or it's a less than c less than x. Right, it just depends what x and a are. But either way, c is sandwiched between those two numbers. So r1 of x, the one I'm looking for, it is equal to, if I just go in here and plug it in, f to the second derivative, or you can write double prime, evaluated at c over 2 factorial, because k is 1, right? k is 1, times x minus a. But I actually know a is 0, because we're given this in the question. It's centered around x equals 0. So x squared. So this is what I'm looking for. So in order to get this, I need the second derivative. So let's calculate the second derivative. So f of x is 8 plus 2x. And this whole thing was to the third. So I'm going to take two derivatives. And feel free to pause the video, double check this for yourself. Uh, the emphasis of the video is not to take derivatives, but it is to uh, show you how Lagrange's remainder theorem works. So I'm going to quickly do this. f prime of x is equal to, this would be 2 over 3, 8 plus 2x to the negative 2 over 3. And f double prime of x, this is equal to da -da 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 negative 8 over 9 times 8 plus 2x to the negative 5 over 3. Now of course this was kinda crazy that I did this so fast. Um, feel free to pause the video and just double check this for yourself. Uh, don't forget the chain rule. There's always chain rule when you take the derivative here. That's yeah. Alright, so f double prime of c, right? I'm gonna want f double prime c. I just plug in c here. So what's r1 of x? r1 of x is equal to well, f double prime of c, well, that's just negative 8 over 9 times 8 plus 2c, right, because I want c here, to the negative 5 over 3. This thing is over 2 factorial times x squared. So this is your answer. This is what r1 of x is. So r1 of x is true for c, and c is... Uh, C is between X and A, and we know A is 0. So it's either the case where, depending what we choose for X for the function, C is either between 0 and X, if X is positive, or C is between X and 0 in the case that X is negative. Right? All we know is that C is some number between A and X. Great. So let's do part two of this question. 
So let's go back up and take a look at what part two was. So part two was give the upper bound of the error for the third root of nine, given that you're using t1 of one half to approximate f here. So just double check, if you plug in f at half, right, x is half, then I would get eight plus two times a half, right, two times a half gives me back one. So eight plus one is nine, so it's a third root of nine. So in fact, t1 of half would approximate f at a half. So we want to find an upper bound on the error upper bound on the error of r1 at a half. Right, so this is the error, we want an upper bound on this thing. So let's go at it. So let's go at it. So we have r1 of a half, and this is equal to negative 8 over 9, times 8 plus 2c to the power of negative 5 over 3, this whole thing's over 2 factorial times 1 half squared, right? Because I know x is now a half. And just remember, f of 1 half is the third root of 9. So that's what we're looking for. So this r1 of half is what we're looking for. So let's take r1 of half in the absolute value signs. This is equal to, well, I'm going to have the absolute value sign here, and it's going to be negative 8 over 9 over, and I'm just going to take all these fractions, right? 2 times 2 times 2, right? So 1 half squared is a quarter times uh, one, over, uh, 1 over 2 factorial. That's altogether 1 over 8. So it's like writing an 8 here. Times 1 over 8 plus 2c. And now this negative 5 over 3, the negative exponent, brings it to the denominator, and I have this. So this is what I have for R1 evaluated at half. So I can cancel the 8s and the 1 over 9, right? So I would have 1 over 9, but the negative can disappear because I've got absolute value signs. So 1 over 9 times 1 over third root of 8 plus 2c. And I'm rewriting it like this, so you might be able to see what I'm about to do next a little bit better. Um, so it's equal to this. Now, we said before, c has to be a number between x and a. right? So we have x, it's half. We have a, it's 0. So c has to be a number between 0 and a half. So that's how I get c is between 0 and a half. So the question is, when is this thing biggest inside this interval? Right, so the bigger I plug in c, the bigger the denominator gets. Right, so I probably want the smallest denominator possible. So since c is between 0 and a half, I would pick c to be 0. So I would say this is less than or equal to 1 over 9 times 1 over the third root of 8, and that's to the power of 5. Right? So this is less than this because if I pick the smallest denominator, this overall fraction will get bigger. Right? So picking something smaller would give something bigger. So if I were to pick a half instead, this whole number here would be smaller. All right, so this is an this is an upper bound. This is an upper bound to r1 of half. So let me just write this out a little bit nicer. I know this is a positive number, the positive everything inside is positive, so I don't need the absolute value signs anymore. So this is equal to 1 over 9 times 1 over 2 to the 5, right? The third root of 8 is 2, and this is 2 to the 5. So it's 1 over 9 times 1 over 32, and that gives me 1 over 288. Uh, no, I didn't just do that in my head. I've actually done this video a couple times and made mistakes. So anyway, um, this is an upper bound to your thing here. Uh, 
And this is an upper bound on the approximation using your first degree Taylor polynomial evaluated half to approximate this thing here. So using Lagrange's remainder formula, I found an upper bound for it. So this is how you would use uh, Lagrange's remainder formula. It's kind of similar to uh, Taylor's inequality. And in fact, in the next video, I'll show how it's related to Taylor's inequality. But uh, this one deals specifically with using C in between whatever it's centered at and the point you're approximating. Uh, so with that said, this is actually probably the way you, you would do 7B on assignment 9. So this is a bit of a refresher or clarification on how you would do that. And in fact, how I got those different, uh, those different intervals for each part of 7B in the last assignment. So I will do one more video afterwards explaining to you how to do 7B using this method. All right, great.